In this video, I'm going to show you how to stack focus for an incredible depth of field. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV and today I've come out into the Norfolk coastline to a beautiful place called Cromer. It's a great place to visit but you can probably hear the music in the background. Now I want to get a shot here on the beach of Cromer Pier as the sun's setting but I also want to get a picture of these little stones and rocks in the foreground. I need a depth of field that goes from the very far infinity to about 50 centimetres in front of the camera. Now my lens, which is a Canon 24 to 105, has a smallest aperture of f22. Now that's good for a, a depth of field from about infinity to a couple of meters. But I want to go to a couple of centimeters. I want super depth of field. And for that, I need to do a technique called focus stacking. Now it's dead easy to do. All I'm going to do is start off by using a tripod. In this case, it is just my little gorilla pod. This is actually perfect for this because I want to get really close down to the ground, but obviously I don't want to put my camera on the sand for fairly obvious reasons. So the Gorillapod works like a charm for that. So let's set my camera up. I'm going to be working in aperture priority mode, A or AV setting on my Canon, and I'm going to choose F22, the, the smallest aperture I can get. I'm going to choose an ISO of 800 because it's, it's fairly late in the evening now, so despite how it looks on the video, it's, it's quite dark down here. Okay, so F22, ISO 800, that's telling me a shutter speed of 25th of a second. That should be okay. Widest angle end of my lens, 24 millimeters, and I'm gonna frame up my shot by switching on live view. Live view means I don't have to get down here on the sand, which is kind of handy. So let's find a, a nice little arrangement. We'll go with something, there we go, like that. That should do me pretty well. Let's actually come at a little bit of an angle. So. The things in the foreground are going to have a lot more dra drama and impact because they are so close to the camera. And I'm going to work in manual focus. So I'm not going to use autofocus because that's just not going to do the job for this shoot. So manual focus, and I'm going to focus it at its closest focusing because I'm actually going to take a series of pictures, a technique known as focus stacking. So I'm going to take three or four or five photos and then we'll use Photoshop to join them all together. So on its very closest focus, that says macro on my camera, that's going to be my first photo. Here we go. So that's the first shot in the bag and as you can see it's nice and sharp in the foreground but if we have a really close look we can see how that background is actually quite soft. So let's take another photo. This time I'm going to dial it in to 0.7 meters, 70 centimeters. Take the shot. Then I'm gonna change my focus to one meter. Take the shot. Then three and a half meters. Take the shot. And finally, infinity, and take the shot. So I've taken four or five different shots there. Now they'll all have a different depth of field and it may well be I'll only need two or three of those images. But by taking a sequence, I've got the ability to choose the best ones and merge them together inside of Photoshop. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. Right, so here I am back inside of Photoshop CS6 and I've chosen the three pictures out of all of those that I want to combine. So I'll just select all of those. These are raw files, so when I bring them into Photoshop, of course, it'll open, first of all, in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, to save some time, I've done some basic editing here for color and I've straightened up the horizon and I've reduced the noise. However, one thing I want to show you is what to do with the sky, because there is a brilliant sky in this picture. It's just not quite coming through at the moment. Now, to get the best sky, I'm going to use the graduated filter. Now, the graduated filter allows me to do a local adjustment. In other words, not the entire picture, just a small area. I've dialed in minus one and a half stops of exposure, and I can drag a gray grad filter, look at that, straight down onto the picture. Now, have a look at my thumbnails down on the left-hand side. These are the three pictures, but you'll notice the gray graduated filter is only on the top picture. If I click on Select All, 
and then I choose to synchronize, it'll synchronize all of the effects on this image on screen onto the other two pictures, including things like white balance, exposure, um, clarity, of course. But it doesn't include local adjustments by default and cropping for that matter too. So if you want to do anything like cropping, spot removal or local adjustments, remember to switch those on and now when I click OK, watch what happens to those thumbnails. They both get the same grey grad filter. OK, that's great. We can now open images. Note it's images plural because I had select all ticked. If I hadn't got select all clicked, then it would be image singular. So I'm going to open the images out of RAW and I'll get all three images opening here inside of Photoshop. Now, just take a moment or two. So whilst it's doing that, let me tell you which three images out of all of the ones I took that I'm using. The first one is the very closest focus, the one where the lens said macro, even though it's not a true macro, of course. Then it's the one meter focus and the three and a half meter focus. Those have given me enough depth of field to give me the exact effect that I want. OK, so there they are, all are in Photoshop. Lovely. Let's just go check them and we'll see what we've got. So what have we got here? Well, um, we've got three images at three different focal points. All I need to do is combine three images into one. And I'm going to start by going to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. Now, this does a handy little job. In fact, it does two jobs in one. First of all, it'll take all of the open images, I'll add them in, and it'll make a brand new image, each image as a new layer. And if I tick here, it'll create an aligned image as well. So even though I was using a tripod or a gorilla pod, technically, there's a little bit of movement between each photo and this will help to keep everything in alignment. Right, so here we are, we've got our pictures three images, three layers. Let's have a look at this one. This one has nice sharp focus here, but of course, by the time I go to that background, you can see that it's a little bit blurry. The next one down is a little bit sharper in the background. It's got more mid um, image sharpness. And then the final one is nice and sharp in the background. But of course, if I go down to the, uh, the bottom, it's gonna to be totally blurred down here in the sand. So between those three images, I have the depth of field that I need. All I need to do now is to combine the focusing points together. And to do that, I need to make sure I have all three layers active. So I'm going to hold the shift key, click on the top layer so you can see they've all become active and I can go to edit auto blend layers. Now, if that's grayed out, then you didn't select all of your layers. But when you get in here, you should find that stack images is the option you want to choose. Just click OK. Stack Images will analyze the individual layers. It'll find the sharp bits and the blurry stuff. It'll mask off the blurry stuff and reveal the sharp bits from the layers below. It's very, very clever and it works extremely well. And there you go. There is my basic image. That looks OK. There's a little bit of checkerboard pattern to remove, which was caused by the, uh, the auto aligning feature. So I'll just get the crop tool. and I'll just crop this in like that and click on the tick, lovely. And then I can come to my layers and I can just flatten that down. So three layers become one. Let's go check it, did it actually work? Yes, it's beautifully sharp here, that looks fantastic. Is it sharp on the background? Yes, I can read all of the text on there. I can come across here and I can see the, the fine detail even on those railings there. Okay, so there it is, my amazingly huge depth of field image. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. 
Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.